Hey, my name is Mark Myers, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the making of the latest video that I not only directed, but I also shot and edited. And this one was for the band Arkells again, and this one is called One Thing I Know. And a little side note, last time I did one of these, I was talking about how I got injured playing basketball, getting hit in the throat. This time, I've got uh, what well, I could have got stitches, but I didn't just here above my eye Basketball I like playing so I'm no cinematographer as I'm not an expert in lighting you get that kind of spread on The light so for me to shoot a video it really has to be a running gun style Which basically means that it's gonna be really scrappy with a small crew and by a small crew. I mean no crew I uh, can't get much smaller than myself and the band. Well, actually that's not really true because Jordan was there, he's the band's uh, tech, and he helped with the band gear. Nathan Nash was there to take awesome photographs. And of course, Ashley was there as the band's manager to make sure everything ran smoothly. Now, I can't really recall exactly how this video came to be, like the origins, but I basically got a phone call from Ash and Max, and they had a concept in mind, and they asked me to help them bring it to life. So they sent me the track and they had mentioned that they wanted to film in a convenience store or supermarket, but they quickly zeroed in on the idea of filming at a no frills, specifically the one at the famously sketchy but cool Dufferin Mall. So it was clear right away that this was going to be a straight up performance music video. Now I normally prefer like conceptual or story driven videos because there's just a bit more need for creative original thought. But as mentioned, this being a performance video, you had to kind of find a way of like, ooh, how are we gonna make this cool? So for this video, I didn't bother doing a text edit where I um, essentially pre-edit the video using descriptive text over the song. So instead I just referenced a whole bunch of music videos that were shot in like supermarkets or convenience stores to get some inspiration from a composition or editing standpoint. So if you've seen the video, then you know that we tried to get a little creative with the way it was shot. And to do that, we shot with a fisheye lens and shot at a slower frame rate. So it would give us that faster, more choppy look in the edit. And it's worth noting that both of those ideas were Max's, um, so thank you, Max. The fisheye look has a long history in like album art and, and photography and was also used in a bunch of videos, um, probably the most famous in like some Mace or Puff Daddy or Missy Elliott videos, even uh, Beastie Boys used it effectively and probably a whole bunch of other videos that aren't even top of mind. So one thing I was curious when I was referencing those videos is did they use the full frame or how much of the um, black edge was visible? So that was something that I was kind of keeping my eye open for and just seeing how wide is too wide and what was like the kind of sweet spot. And then I looked at a couple music videos for that fast choppy look, but specifically the video from Travel Charger called 100 Million. And shout out to Greg Nori. Him and I go way back, uh, 12 or 13 years ago, I produced a series called Disband on Much Music. Wow. Hello. Hello. How's it going? I'm Greg Nori. He was the host or the guru. Uh, and those were some good times. So what's up, Greg, if you're watching? Okay, still in pre-production. A few days before the shoot, uh, Max, Ash, and I did a sneaky location scout where we tested a couple shots at No Frills. <laughs> I'm gonna back up. Just to get a sense of the space, where are the cool angles, where is the best place to film the band, and try to just quickly map out our where we might want to shoot and what looks cool. Oh yeah, I think I cut together something really quickly, maybe like a 30 second um, edit, just to share with the band, and just to show Max as well, to get Max excited and to get buy-in from the band. Oh, I must say that I was impressed by this No Frills. The one by my house has like lower ceilings. It's a little darker, a little dingier. So again, I was pleasantly surprised. It was like high ceilings, very uniformed lighting that looked really cool. The lines up yeah, there looks cool. No, it's awesome. And it was clean 
and then it, I knew it would look really good. Next, I went out and rented the fisheye lens. I went with an eight to 15 millimeter lens just to give me the freedom or the flexibility of trying different focal lengths to see what looks the coolest. So I tested it out just right here in my office. Is this my office? Why did you lose your accent? So I tested the fisheye look and the lower frame rate just to get a sense of what works. Not to get too technical, but I tested out two different um, speeds. One was 15 frames converted to 30, so essentially it would be double the speed. And then I also tested 15 frames converted to 24, which I don't know the math well enough, but it's not double. Uh, I ended up liking the double speed more. It was just a bit more, more exaggerated look essentially. And I think that that was the way to go. And then for more context, what that does is on set, when you have a three minute song and you slow it down by half, you now need six minutes to get through the song. So you have to keep that in mind when planning. And lastly, I just experimented with some other creative thoughts uh, at home just to see if they would work. And I shared them with Max and he thought they were cool, but we ultimately didn't go in that direction. But here's a little sneak peek of what those tests look like. So sick and tired of hiding secrets living in my soul. All right, enough about all that. Now we're going to get into production. Pre-production, see ya. So we shot on a Sunday night after the No Frills closed and it happened to be... Father's Day, and the plan was to shoot from 9 p.m. to midnight, which only gave us three hours. But we kind of knew that we would need an extra hour, uh, but we were kind of just forcing that three hour time limit on ourselves to really just kick our butt and kick us into gear and force us to move along really quickly. Basically, the mindset was go in there, film a bunch of stuff, have fun, and get out of there. So on set, Max acted as my AD, my assistant director. He was there kind of pushing me along and, and making sure that I wasn't doing another take and another take and another take because I kind of uh, can do that sometimes. So I knew I didn't have a lot of time to make this video. So I essentially broke it down into chunks. I figured two hours with the band and one hour with Max. So each band member would get 20 minutes. So that would be an hour and 20 minutes and then 10 minutes to set up for a full band performance, then take 30 minutes to get that, leaving one hour to film with Max. That was the plan. So when I started filming with each band member, I would set a timer. Hey Siri, set timer 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes and counting. And when the timer went off, I would finish the shot and Max would say, Moving on. So I started filming with Tony in the produce section. And because I knew that the mindset was film as much as I can and like sort it out in the edit, I filmed everyone with my 24 to 70 lens, normally at 24 frames a second, as well as the fisheye, usually at half speed to give the choppy look. So how the different frame rates work, if you're interested, is that if you want something to be in slow motion, you shoot it at a higher frame rate. So then you have to slow it down to get it to normal frame rate. And the equal but opposite is true if you want something to appear fast is you shoot it at a lower frame rate and then speed it up to get it to normal. And what's normal, normal in the film world is 24 frames per second. And I think everyone knows this, but maybe not, but uh, film or video is implied motion. Motion pictures are based on an optical illusion. Just another case where seeing is believing. It's basically photography in motion. Films are generally shot at 24 frames, static frames per second. And once those 24 frames are shown all within one second, it looks like real motion. And the shutter speed or the shutter angle set correctly, then you'll get the motion blur that matches what our eye most naturally sees. Technical, sorry. Okay, after Tony, I filmed Mike performing up and down the aisles. So cool. Then we filmed Nick in front of the ice cream cones and in the frozen food section. And finally filmed Tim playing the drums by the checkout. And it was Max's idea, he kind of just did it, but per band performance, he would jump in and perform with them, which helped the vibe, helped the shots, and made it much more dynamic. So again, thank you, Max. Now to talk about the band performance uh, specifically for a second, what made it different than most band performances was we shot it in a circle. 
Now I've seen that done before, but I don't see it very often and it was actually, again, Max's idea on the location scout where we were trying to figure out where should we shoot the band. He's like, yeah, let's just have us be in a circle right here. And I was like, that's a good idea. And I liked it because it sparked an idea I had in my mind before where I was testing my gimbal that I shot the video on. Um, I was testing it panning smoothly with it like a month ago. Uh, so I was like, ooh, I can use, use that little slow pan feature here and I think that would work really well for the bridge and just slow down the video and give a different aesthetic. So to accomplish that shot, it was actually more difficult than maybe it seems is because I had to basically lay down on the ground with my like finger on the joystick of the gimbal, trying to make the pan as consistent and smooth as possible without affecting the tilt of it, um, which was which was hard. So, and I had to keep on like getting out of the shot because it was such a wide angle that I had to like scurry around the bottom of the tripod. Uh, but I was really happy with that shot. It's kind of um, how I envisioned it looking and I liked it. I know that I can't go backwards. I also brought my GoPro Max, which is the 360 camera that I own. That way I could in post choose where I wanted it to look, whatever made the most sense and, and it kind of eliminated human error because I didn't have to try and hide from the wide angle lens and I didn't screw up the joystick. And as a bonus, I have like a nine foot pole that I can put the GoPro on and I did one pass of the song. Why did you lose your Where I just moved the camera through space and tried to get as many creative interesting shots as I could. I only used that at the very end of the video, it kind of looks like a little jib or crane shot where it starts at the ceiling, goes down to Tim, comes back, see Max, and then ending on the like top down kind of bird's eye view shot. That was done with a nine foot pole and a GoPro 360. Then it was time for our full band fisheye 100 million shot. We were all really happy and excited with how this shot looked. Yeah, you can see, oh, that's sick. And you could tell by the performance that we got out of the band. Everyone kind of really hammed it up and it made it look really cool. And to give me more freedom on uh, choices in the edit, I had each band member individually perform in front of that fisheye, uh, as well as the full band. So next, I tried to do something uh, to contrast this super wide angle look that we had, and I wanted to do an extreme close up of mouths. Uh, I know it's kind of weird, and it was I was kind of hesitant to like do the shot, but once I did, and Max saw it, he's like, "Oh yeah, like let's have everybody do this." Basically, why I wanted to do this shot is just for shot variety. It's like anything; if we see the same thing over and over, it kind of disappears. So the idea with this shot is that we're super, super, super wide and then we're really, really, really close. Uh, not rocket science, but hopefully it was effective in making the eye a little excited. In case anyone cares, I uh, decided to shoot this by the flowers just to have a little bit of color in the background around their face, really soft out of focus. So that's where we shot that. By this time, it was probably already midnight. So we were working on borrowed time. So we were just like, okay, what cool shots can we get right now? Max and Mike just hopped up on the conveyor belt. It looked really good. So we performed a couple extra passes just to nail the movement and the performance. I really liked this shot. I was using my gimbal for basically everything, which is a handheld uh, gimbal to stabilize the shot. And I just worked on this arc. Uh, I think it was pretty effective and I did like the way the shot looked when I went further back just because the lighting, the linear lights uh, of these fluorescent tubes just looked really cool. Oh, and a little Easter egg. I don't think she was visible in the final cut. I'd have to double check, but manager Ash was down underneath the conveyor belt, pressing the kind of foot pedal to make the conveyor belt move. So thank you, Ash. <laughs> After that, Tony jumped into a shopping cart and we filmed Max pushing him up and down the aisles, which was really fun. We got some great performance out of both of those guys. 
It also took us a few minutes to figure out the best seating position, whether Tony should hold the camera himself. We landed on the idea where I could actually ride it while holding the gimbal and filming. It wasn't easy. I don't know if it seems like it was easy, but to hold on plus hold the gimbal with one hand while also making sure the framing was right, it, it, uh, it, uh, I need bigger muscles essentially, but I was happy with the end result. And finally, Max and I just ran around the store for about 10 minutes. Uh, we switched the lenses, switched the frame rates, just try to get Max performing, just to give me more footage in the edit so I could actually make more logical decisions to say, oh, this normal lens should be in these opening verses. And then when we get to the chorus, we can go to the wide angle. And then that was a wrap, we were done. I'll share a little bit about the post-production. It was actually harder than normal uh, because normally I'm not doing full performance videos. So just syncing the visuals to the music track and the edit was time consuming and kind of difficult because when you film at different frame rates internally in the camera, you don't get audio. Like you don't get an audio reference track, it's just video. So I'm having to like mouth read and figure out which part of the song are we actually singing. And it was especially difficult uh, because we would sometimes, Max would just have the phone and just scrub the various parts of the song. This. So syncing was hard, but once uh, it was all sunk, my edit came together pretty well, pretty quickly. So long story short, the band essentially approved uh, the V1 of the edit, so that was good. I sent it over to my buddy Hattie, who's a DP, and he colored the video for me because I'm not a colorist either, and he helped make the video pop and the skin tones right, so it looks much better than if I were to color it myself. So the video premiered last week, and it's done really well. There's a lot of positive feedback, and even just specifically, just even friends of mine messaging me is kind of what how I gauge whether something's successful or not. So thank you. So thank you to the band uh, for letting me be a part of this one and letting me flex or at least exercise my shooting muscles. For those interested, I shot this video on the Sony FX3 on a Sony 24-70 lens. And I also rented, as I mentioned, the 8-15mm to millimeter fisheye. And to get the steady shots, I used the Ronin RS2 gimbal that I recently purchased and I love it. Uh, I like it a lot. I use the same setup minus the fisheye lens for a video I shot for my buddy Roddy uh, a couple months ago and I really liked the way it looked and the types of shots I was able to get as a one person crew. I hope to do a making of, of the video that I shot for my buddy Roddy because I think it would be interesting and I hope to do some editing breakdowns as well. If there is a video that you would like me to do an editing breakdown for, please let me know. And if you have any other questions, put them in the comments and I would be happy to answer them. And if you're still here, please consider hitting subscribe. Uh, it's motivating. Thanks.